Today on Volleydon's Weekly, starring head coach Ryan Rock Parat, we'll discuss our two matches over the weekend against St. Francis and Penn State. Later on, we'll bring in senior libero Scott McNerney, and we'll talk about the season so far, his expectations for the rest of the season, and a little bit about his mechanical engineering major. After that, we'll bring head coach Rock Parat back, and we'll discuss the three upcoming matches this weekend against Harvard, Sacred Heart, and Allison Broadus. All that and more coming up on Volleydon's Weekly. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Volleydon's Weekly. I'm your host and assistant coach JW PK. We're here with head coach Ryan Rock Parat. A uh, quick thank you to our sponsors: IAB Bank, Indiana Physical Therapy, Molten, Oni, and Pizza Hut. Oh boy, that's a good start to uh, to the show. I think Rock. I think I'm doing a fantastic job being a host on my on my second time here. A little bit nervous in the first one, but I think I'm doing a much better job today. What do you think? You don't know what I want to think. Is this cable television? <laughs> if it's cable television, I'll let you know exactly. Where I am. Although you did get the opening takedown in one try this time. I, I was, it was like 18 as last time. Yeah, the 32 yeah, times that yeah. we had last week. So, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll, I'll try to slow down a little bit more for you. I know you got to love the camera. Quick witted. You got to embrace person. the camera. <laughs> I know you're not. You're embrace a history major. You're yeah. a history major, not a comm or a business guy like me. But you got to embrace the camera. I'll People try. I'll see try better next time. Who you are. I'll try. Oh, that's that's, what that's what it's, 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 not, it's starring Ryan Perot, but it, they want to see who I am, not who you are, right? The star, yes. <laughs> the bright lights, yes, the star. Bright oh, lights, big nice. entertainment coming from this show, Volodons <laughs> Weekly. Indeed. So, let, everybody, we played two home matches this weekend. We played against St. Francis and Penn State. Mm -hmm. uh, on Friday, we took on St. Francis, the St. Francis Red Flash. Unfortunately, uh, we lost in five sets. We put up a great fight in that match, winning. Uh, two really good volleyball sets. We played some really, really good volleyball. Um, I started all freshmen and sophomores for uh, the second time or third time this year. So a very young volleyball team. We put up a good performance. Unfortunately, we fell in, in five sets. And we all hit St. Francis five, 500 to 300 in the fifth set. Uh, but some untimely service errors and our ability to block and, and dig balls really did us in. You just said that we played such a great match. You just play, we well, we lost. played a great four sets, and I think in the fifth set we just didn't k uh, keep up with some of the defensive energy that we had. Mm -hmm. We blocked seven balls in the fourth set, and we blocked zero in the fifth, and I think that just really came back to bite us a lot. You are definitely Mr. Optimism, and I am definitely Mr. <laughs> Pessimism. We played, I thought, two and a half good sets of volleyball. First of all, we did not play very well the first set. I we mean, slept, we haven't played a good slept, first set all year. We slept walk through the first set. Again, another slow start, so that we <laughs> put that to the wash. We played a much better second set. Uh, our offense clicked. We did some things in transition uh, that I really impre was impressed with. Our, our serving still wasn't there, yeah. uh, but I was impressed with our second set. The third set after the 10-minute intermission, we slept locked again. Yeah. Our offense was anemic. I think we only hit about 110, uh, and they unloaded on us. The fourth set, we battled back and played pretty well in the fourth set. The fourth set was a big battle. Not a lot of hitting. A lot, not a lot of good hitting numbers for no. both sides of the net. No. But I thought it was because of the good defensive energy that both teams are bringing. We blocked seven balls in that set, which is crazy. You block seven balls in three sets. That's pretty good volleyball. Blocking seven in one is is good volleyball. Well, we blocked seven balls, but we also made some great touches at the net that don't show up on the stack yeah. sheet that we we're able to turn and convert for points. Yeah. And we got some timely serving in the fourth set. In the fifth set, however, there, there, there are two stats that just blow my mind in the fifth set. We out-hit them significantly, 564 to like 3-something. It was like 367, yeah. But the, and we lose the fifth set. The, the other stat that blows my mind is the fact that our offense went 8-0 and 15. Okay? Yeah. A, a great number. Yeah, it's a fantastic number if you just take that by itself. We had 15 swings in the fifth set. They had 22. That's the difference on why we lost. They were able to make defensive plays yeah. and get seven more swings out of it and convert. And that was the difference. And so as well as you think we played, and I, of course, had a chance to watch the videotape, there are some things, obviously, that we need to significantly improve on. And we're competitive to a degree in which we are putting ourselves in a position to be successful. Uh, the, the problem is we haven't gotten over the hump yet to be successful. We haven't made the key play to really win. And hopefully that can come with the aging process of our team with the more playing experience they get. And, and I got a bunch of text messages on Friday night from a of lot of Of course you did. You're Mr. Social. Of course <laughs> you a, did. You get all the text messages. A lot of people in the crowd uh, yeah. said that they liked the brand of volleyball we're playing. We're playing entertaining volleyball. Uh, maybe not consistent volleyball all the time, but... We're playing hard, and I think the fans really saw that. And a lot of people texted me and said, hey, it was a fun match to watch. Uh, service errors were a big deal. 
and you know consistency. And I think we could agree with both of those at certain points in the match that uh, obviously the fans, they see all the service errors, and that's the biggest thing for them. Um, some service errors were, were better than others. You, obviously, serving out is never a good thing, but an aggressive service error you can take and stomach. Um, and I think that, that, you know, at least we're entertaining the fans, and hopefully they come back to see more volleyball. And I thought they did against the Penn State. In the Penn State match, there were a lot more fans in the seats. Obviously, the Big Ten team coming into town, um, you expect that kind of stuff. There's a big club volleyball tournament in the area. Uh, we lost in three sets, unfortunately, to Penn State, uh, but we lost two of those three in what we call do sets or two-point sets. We lost, uh, I believe, 25-23 and 27-29 in those two sets. Uh, talk a little bit about the Penn State match and, and kind of your feelings from that match. Well, in regards to Penn State, the, the, the biggest difference, number one, is that we cut down on our errors. We didn't make as many errors, especially from the service line. We only had 13 against Penn State. We had 29 against Sacred Heart. And we actually cut down on our Saint attack. St. Francis. Uh, Francis, I'm sorry. And we also cut down on our attack errors, which was really good. Uh, it's very difficult to play a team that's more physical than you. And almost every team is more physical, but Penn State is really physical with their out of the, size out and of athleticism. This world with their size. Oh, my goodness gracious. But that's something that we're accustomed to seeing, obviously, playing all those teams in California. Uh, first set, again, was another whitewash in the first set, another slow set. But in the second set, we actually had an opportunity where we actually should have won the second set. And it was very disappointing that we didn't. Uh, and it ended very poorly with a service error. Uh, but I thought we really did some really nice things. Our offense started to click the second set. Our game plan systematically was working very nicely. Our blocking was still anemic. Here's the other, here's the other shadows of a tale of two cities from, from Friday night into Saturday night. Friday night, our pin players played pretty well offensively. And we got very little middle production. Saturday night against Penn State, our middles performed very, very well, hitting 357 for Richie Dietrich and 400 for Graydon yep. Schrader. Yep. But our pin numbers were awful. Yeah. We couldn't combine the two to make it happen. If we can combine the two or get one production out of somebody on opposite nights, we win probably a set, maybe even two against Penn State or maybe even push them to five. So that was kind of disappointing that we couldn't have put it all together. But they put you under so much duress with yeah, their serving, really their do. size, their block. So I was really pleased the way with that we ran our systems offensively, yeah. uh, especially, again, in the third set. I thought we did some really nice things. The defensive part was very, very bad. Yeah. I, I did not think we blocked very well. I thought our backcourt defense wasn't there as well, and so those are things that we're going to work on moving forward. Yeah, and, we, and we've and we done a lot of stuff to work on uh, just defense here in the first two days being back, having practiced Monday night and Tuesday morning. Uh, I think you've made a big emphasis on the, and the transition game the serving game and, and all the fans see the serves like we said we miss a lot uh, on that Friday match we'll continue to work on that and get better um, and that's something that uh, we're gonna need to have when we come up and we play Harvard uh, Sacred Heart and Ellison brought us coming up this weekend so uh, with that please stay tuned as we see senior libero Scott McNerney and team captain by the way here we'll talk a little bit about the past couple of matches and the upcoming matches as well uh, stay tuned we'll see you later on Volleyons Weekly. My particular specialty is rhetoric. What rhetoric is in a lot of ways is helping a student to better understand the messages that are being distributed either through media or in their interpersonal lives or wherever that message comes from. The more we understand how these processes work, the, the better we are at evaluating the kinds of information we're receiving. Welcome back to Volleydons Weekly. We now have joining us senior libero Scott McNerney and team captain. How you doing, Scott? It's been you know only a couple hours since we saw you in practice. It's probably going. Pre although you got the splint on now, so I do. I do. <laughs> what what exactly happened with the splint now? I because uh, I, I don't to, even know actually. It was yesterday. I, I know. I heard you yell, but I don't know exactly yeah, what happened. I went to dive for a ball, and I'm not confident if, whether or not I hit my thumb on the ground or the ball hit my thumb. But it really bent my nail back, and I am in excruciating amounts of pain. So it's about the nail more than anything else? It's the nail and the whole like front knuckle okay. of the thumb. It's pretty. It's the pretty contraption good. that John Patton, our athletic trainer, put on your thumb is it's odd. almost like a it's very it's very odd. It's inconvenient. Like, I don't I don't least. know what that's supposed to protect you from. Like yeah, he said it, it'll prevent it from banging. Like on if you something. were like do this, does it hurt it seems like it hurts when you do like this with just it. Just any like contact it, with anything. With anything. Yeah. So setting the ball must be difficult. It then. was you saw me setting with yeah. nine fingers today. Yeah. We we did we did a drill today, an out of system attacking drill and Scott's a Libero. So when our setters dig balls, the Liberos actually are the second setter in those situations. So Scott was put in a situation where he had to set a bunch of balls. 
Um, and actually, you did a very good job with it. I was feeling Especially it. with a, a bum thumb, you did yeah. a very good job with it. Thank you, yeah. Yvonne was very impressed with my setting as well. Yeah, maybe because usually not very good. I, I, I Yvonne know. seed, you said it. I wasn't going to gonna say so. that, but there you go, fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know why he's impressed. Like, you said, all, you always said. Yeah, maybe set, it was because I had been a bum thumb. Your entire, it had to have been that. Yeah. That's why, because yeah. you were we'll, complaining we'll about it the entire time. He <laughs> <laughs> was yeah. like, wow, Scott, that was so good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, talk about the season a little bit. Talk about... Um, the matches in California, how that went, and uh, you can kind of go into this weekend with St. Francis and Penn State as well. Absolutely. You guys covered it. Kind of a rough start, but um, we also talked about this morning at practice. John Patton actually said it. It was, it was a really good experience in California. We would have loved to come out with some wins, four, uh, thinking positively, but, but it was a good experience. We got to see some, I lo especially the young guys, they got to play teams that, that they've dreamt of playing their whole yeah. life. You know, the UCSBs, the UC Irvines, all those kind of teams that you watch on TV. We yeah. got a chance to play them, and and we put up a good fight most of the time. You know, it, it's tough with Tony going down in the first match of the year. Um, obviously, he was a big part of our team last year, and we were looking forward to having him as a big part of the team this year. <clears throat> but it's honestly, I'm happy with with where we are. I'd love to have more wins, but I think we're growing as a team. I'm really impressed with Richie Diedrich and Pel Pelegrin Vargas. Uh, they both freshmen. You know. It's the first time they've ever played Division One volleyball, and I think they, they really – Richie, for one, was our offensive rock out in California, if, if I have to say so. He, was, he performed really well every game, and Pele's finally coming into him, his role as, as our L2 swing, or L1 now, I guess you could say. But. Yeah, somebody who we probably use more than – he's not playing in the L1 spot uh, or outside. You know, we, we terminate okay. – termin, use terminology in volleyball with the L1, O1, um, depending on kind of what position they're playing with the outsides. Um, your L1, your O1 is usually your better outside. Uh, your O2 is usually more of your passing, ball control, uh, digging, does everything mm -hmm. left side. So for those of you who are familiar with our volleyball team, Eddie Rivera, or our program, Eddie Rivera was much more of an L2 than an L1, uh, prototypically, but because he was our best left side, we had him playing in the L1 position. Exactly. Um, Pellegrin has been playing in the L2 position because of Tony's situation where Tony was going to be our L1. Um, but he's still staying in the L2 position, and we've brought over opposite Colton Stone to play in the L1 position mm -hmm. um, and kind of take a couple more swings on the right side where he's a little bit more comfortable. Um, so we haven't made that switch yet, but as you talked about, Pelegrin Vardis is our kill leader mm -hmm. uh, as a freshman with this volleyball team, which is pretty, you know, it's a pretty, takes a pretty special player Absolutely. to come into an established program and, and be the kill leader for us. And like you said, part of that has to do with some injuries, but part of it has to do with his uh, extraordinary play this year. Absolutely, and, and I think... It was probably a rough start, but I, I give that credit to him being a freshman. But I think he's done a really good job now. He's he's found where he wants to be. He's found his groove, I think. And uh, I think we're going to be using him a lot moving forward. Yeah, he's he's one of those guys, and, and so is Richie. You talked about Richie a lot. Absolutely. Uh, both those guys have extraordinary bright futures and mm -hmm. uh, players who could really make a big, big impact on the conference uh, in the future, let alone just this year. Absolutely. So, we uh, need him now, yeah. unfortunately. We need him now. Unfortunately. Uh, and, and they can perform now. They've they've tr They've proven that they can slowly get better and they're going to get better. Absolutely. Um, and they're going to be great volleyball players for us for four years. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about uh, your role on the team this year uh, and kind of your role on the team as it's been the last couple years here for, for the IPFW. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Now, I've, I've always been, uh, I would always like to say, I always call myself the eternal freshman. I was always <laughs> the younger guy. And as a serving sub, most of the time, I'm not, I'm not the go-to outside hitter or the big, the big name on campus. But talk, about, talk about exactly what you mean by serving sub. Serving sub. So it is, in men's volleyball, you get six substitutions in a match, and you only can go in and out of the game one time. So in order to, in order to preserve those late, intense, crucial moments of a match or a, or a set, I guess, um, you can put somebody in who you're confident they're going to put in a decent serve, a good serve for the middles who usually either don't have as strong of a serve or aren't as strong as a defensive presence in the back row. So the serving subs come in, they put in a decent serve uh, or a good serve preferably, and then they <laughs> play some back row, backcourt defense and offer a little bit more than the middles tend to do in the back row, considering that the libero is supposed to be in there. But since the middles are serving, the libero can't be in. Yeah, and, and you've kind of taken that role uh, on for the last couple of years for us and have, have really contributed a lot in that in that fashion. Um, seven players get to start and seven players get to, to play a majority of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but you've been a guy who've, who's played a ton of sets in probably almost every single match now um, since you've been a sophomore on mm -hmm. uh, because of that serving sub role of coming in off the bench and putting a good serve in the court and playing some defense. Um, 
you know, maybe you haven't been starting, but you've been very critical to the success of our team over the last couple of years in, uh, in doing those things. So to talk about a little bit how you kind of, your mental state is when you come in. Like, what are you thinking about doing? You go back to serve. What are your thoughts about doing when, when you get back there? Well, my primary focus is to, to, get, a, to get a point. My goal, when you come in as a serving sub and you go up and you give a decent serve and then you don't get the point, you just go right, you're out of the game. Yeah. You get, you That's get it one for that point. Set. Right. So my goal is to, is to stay in for an extra point. And, uh, but my, the thing I've noticed over the years for me is I, I'm kind of an energetic type of guy. I'm loud. <laughs> I have a big mouth. And uh, one of the things I can bring to the team, whether or not it's a, it's a play on the court, it's, it's the energy that we have on the bench. I can, I can somehow convey that to the guys that are on the court. And uh, that's one of the big things I like to bring. But when I'm back there serving, I usually center myself with a nice athletic deep breath. And I put, <laughs> put in the best serve I can back there. And I just go balls to the walls and try to dig any, the ball. Um, I remember there was a play I had uh, <laughs> in California where I don't know how I got there. I ran across the court and then I face first into the bleachers, but I did get the ball <laughs> The up. ball was up. It was, that's all the that ball matters, was up, right? And that is all that matters. Uh, talk, and in, in, we're almost done with the segment, talk a little bit about uh, some of the mechanical engineering stuff you've gone through and, and kind of the process of, of that and how tough it is playing volleyball and being a mechanical engineering major. Absolutely. I was actually blessed to redshirt my freshman year, so it helped them on the volleyball court. Obviously, I got stronger and better, but it also gave me an extra year to be at school, and I was able to space my degree out over four, five years. Normally, it's a four-year program, but I was able to space it out over five years, and that really helped me. I don't think I would have been able to do it if I didn't have that. There were some semesters where they had me taking 17 credits in the spring, <laughs> of mechanical during engineering season. during season so yeah I'm, I'm going to be missing every Thursday or Friday class essentially pretty much and uh, 17 credits on top of that would have been way too difficult so I was fortunate enough to have five years to do it and I'm really happy with my career choice I'm almost done it's my last semester and it, I'm excited to to move forward on in my life I'm going to miss volleyball and you guys obviously but oh that was very nice of yeah, you yeah what is uh what is your senior project really quickly my senior project uh <laughs> it's a rolling drum actually so there's a company we work for custom engineered wheels um they make non-pneumatic wheels so they're it's just the plastic wheels that go on your garbage cans or anything like that they make those they don't have a tire around them like a car tire or anything and i'm making a device that spins um for millions of cycles and tests how long those wheels actually spin for and it's uh Pretty interesting process. I've never actually designed something big like this for a for a company, and we have ten thousand dollars to spend on it, so it's it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, and and the whole engineering department has been really gracious with a bunch of different communities over over the Formate area. Absolutely, then, and they actually are a big. They really like athletics. They they treat a, they they do their best to help. Um, we have a lot of mechanical engineers. They do their best to make sure that we can participate in sports and we keep our grades up in the mechanical engineering department. Yeah, and I think you, you've you kind of been a testament to, uh, and Luis Bertrand, who mm -hmm. is an All-American for us at the Libero spot, your your roommate, um, have really shown everybody how you can uh, both be a really good student and a really good athlete. They don't have to be mutually exclusive at all. Mm -hmm. You can be good at both, and you can spend time on both and have the time to do that um, and, and really be an impact on the court and, and do good in the classroom. And uh, we thank you for everything you've done for our, our program and, well, and all the you. wins you've created with your, your serves being a serving sub. Thank you. Uh, something that's extraordinarily important to our team moving forward. And, and Scott's been an integral part of the team for four years now thank you. doing that kind of stuff. So uh, thanks to Scott McNerney for being here. We'll finish up with a visit with head coach Ryan Rock Parat when we come back. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne, a crossroads of creativity, a campus where streams of thought and knowledge converge, creative minds working together, sharing ideas, expanding human knowledge, and shaping the future. We forge partnerships that inspire our community and strengthen our region. Our scholars, students, and researchers create work that resonates around the world. This is today's IPFW. This is The Don Difference. Welcome back, everybody, to Volley Dons Weekly. I'm joined once again by head coach Ryan Rock Parat. Uh, quick thank you to the rest of our sponsors, Alco, Active Ankle, Asics, Glenbrook Dodge, and the Hyatt Place. Well, you change that up. Why don't you do that to close the show? You know, I, I just, I, I would love to give them the, the thanks they deserve early on in the show. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes sense to do it right away when people tune back in, because they might tune us out by the end of the show. So I want to make sure that when people turn back in after the commercial break that we get them in and that people get to see us. Because yeah. um, maybe when you when you talk for so long, maybe people will turn the show off. I don't know. They are not going to turn the show off. By the way, I said February 7th. is the spe It's actually March. 
March. Special, March 7th. Special show coming in March. <laughs> special show. Special show special coming show in March. Starring one of us. You can choose which one. <laughs> uh, so, Coach, we get to do a long, long, long road trip this mm -hmm. week. Uh, tomorrow we leave to go out to play Harvard. We play Harvard on Thursday. Mm -hmm. We then play Sacred Heart on Friday, and we finish up the road trip uh, with a good match in good old West Virginia against Ellison Broadus mm -hmm. on Sunday afternoon. Uh, talk about the matches against the EIVA opponents of Harvard and Sacred Heart. First Who a bit. in the world put together this schedule? <laughs> it is that person needs to be fired immediately. <laughs> Um, this is a tough road trip, but one I, I wanted to I get rid of. I kind of look at Scott back there, and he might agree with you now that, <laughs> now, now that you're saying that. <laughs> it's one I wanted to get rid of immediately. Um, and we're playing three games on four nights, and it's going to be a challenge. Uh, Harvard's a very good volleyball team. Yeah. They probably run the fastest tempo of any team we're going to see all year. Um, and they're, they're young, explosive. they got some leadership qualities amongst their players. So it's going to be a tough match in their environment. Sacred Heart is a team that we beat here a year ago, uh, and that was really, really tough because they were going through a new coach, uh, new system, et cetera, They et cetera. had their best left side at the time. He was injured. And he was injured, yeah. He was injured at the time. So I think that matchup will be a very interesting matchup because they're out for some revenge. Alderson brought us as a new program out of West Virginia. Um, they're not conference affiliated just yet, but a D2 program in West Virginia. And uh, they had wanted to play us, um, and this was the only time on our schedule that we could to make the trip there. They were here a year ago. In fact, they, that's how we opened up the season, the season with yeah. them was against Aldous and Broadus before we played Stanford here. And so I wanted to return the favor, and so we're going to just do it on this weekend on the way back from... Um, Connecticut, so kind of on the way back, a little bit, a little, a little bit out of the way to come back, but kind of on the way back. But you know, it's so funny. Every time I talk to you, it's like trying to get to Madison, Wisconsin. You have to go through <laughs> Milwaukee if you want to go to La Crosse. You got to go through Milwaukee. You got to go through. <laughs> We're going to be here all day if we talk about that. So We're it's the be same thing. On the way back from the East Coast, you can dip south and then come back up. It'll be just fine. Uh, talk about uh, our expectations for this trip, uh, playing. Uh, two EIVA schools, and you said the independent Elderson brought us. Uh, what are the expectations for our young volleyball team? Once again, we'll probably start uh, a young group of guys, freshmen and sophomores again. Talk about what the expectations are going out there on, on all three match days. Well, I think we're a better road team than we are a home team. Uh, and that's early on, obviously, because we only play two matches at home. But I think we're better on the road, less distractions. And there's no pressure, what they call pressure, to play on the road. So I'm actually looking forward to this trip, to be quite honest with you. Um, I think we should win all three matches. Uh, the Harvard one will be by far the toughest, given their pedigree uh, in recent years out in the EIVA. And we match up very well against most of the EIVA schools. And in fact, after this week, then we'll play uh, NJIT and George Two Mason more. at the end. At the end, I, I really like our relationship with that conference. So, um, But we got to play better. I, I like our offense. I think our offense is starting to click a little bit. Uh, but I'm, I'm really going to be focused on what we're going to be doing on the defensive end of the game. And uh, this would be huge for us. If we can win all three and get some really good momentum coming in with NGIT and George Mason, because NGIT and George Mason are really good volleyball teams with really good volleyball players. Um, so this could be a really good building block for us with some momentum moving forward to come home and host three weekends of volleyball here. What are, what are some of the keys that we've been talking to our team about this week about what we need to do uh, both offensively, defensively, uh, to get this team rolling and, and get some wins under our belt? Uh, serving and passing, numero uno. Uh, that's primal. I mean, it's all about the serving and pass. You can do that. It's great. Number two is it's about the calculation of putting together points. Uh, sometimes, and, and to the untrained eye, it looks great yeah. when the match goes back and forth. But, but strategically within the game, and I've called this this for many years, Larry Zabisco, the great professional wrestler, two-time world champion out of Pittsburgh, used to talk about wrestling being the human game of chess. That's what all sports are. It's the yep. human game of chess, and there's a game within a game. we got to learn to construct points better. we got to understand who and when. That's yep. the key. The last thing is people got to make plays in crunch time. We see the finish line at 20. It's about getting over the hump. we got to make plays and execute and better the ball down the stretch. Yeah, and I think those are the things we've been talking about all week in practice and we'll continue to work on tomorrow before we head out on our road trip out to the East Coast, all the way out to Boston, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in to this week. week's edition of Volleydons Weekly. Thank you to head coach Ryan Rock Broad for being with us and We're to done. senior libero Scott McNerney. Are we done?
Yeah, we're done. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry How about that. How quickly the time goes it flies around when you're here. talking, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Thank you guys for turning in and we'll see you next week. Uh, as Coach Frank used to say, get your serves in, coach. Get your serves in. You need to come up with your own tagline. <laughs> see, see you ya. later.